I love this story. I love this story of Nancy Pelosi getting caught in the hair salon in San Francisco in the middle of lockdown when nobody is supposed to be at a hair salon. But when you're Nancy Pelosi, you're apparently uh, <laughs> above the law in many ways. Um, and uh, it doesn't surprise me. You know, it's sad that this is the reality, but it doesn't surprise me. Most politicians, though, they usually try to hide it. Nancy Pelosi is kind of different because most politicians try to conceal the fact that they are part of a wealthy elite, that they are different from the general public. They will say, well, I'm a man of the people or I'm a woman of the people. And they will pretend to be an average Joe or an average Jane. Um, they will just they will not so transparently flaunt their wealth because they know it will raise eyebrows and people will wonder, well, gee, you've been in uh, politics, elected office for so many years. It's not a very high paying job. How'd you get so rich? How'd you get so privileged? But Nancy Pelosi just doesn't care. Uh, she never even tries to hide it. I remember she made that video at the height of the pandemic showing off her $13 ice cream bar. And now she's been caught red handed at a salon in the middle of the lockdown. It's the old rules for thee and not for me thing. Hypocrisy, double standard, whatever you want to call it, it's bad. But I was thinking about why Nancy Pelosi doesn't feel like she has to hide it, that she can just be out there and just be pompous and elitist and not care. And the reason why I think is that there's nothing that we can take away from her. Kim Jong-un doesn't get as high a percentage of the vote as Nancy Pelosi. Okay, maybe he does, but it's it's probably closer than you think. She is unbeatable because she has been in office so long, 33 years, longer than I've been alive. Let's compare that to some other jobs for just a second. Imagine if you had a football coach who lost more games than he won. Could that guy keep his job for 33 years? What about a business CEO whose company lost money every year? Could that guy or girl keep their job for 33 years? When you think about it, in every profession known to God and man, you have to do something. You have to show some results, some performance, some positivity in order to keep your job for even a week, much less 33 years, except for politics. Elected office, politics, government, Congress is the only job that consistently rewards failure. It rewards incumbency, and Nancy Pelosi is the epitome of failure and incumbency. She can act so arrogantly because of her power. She knows she'll never lose her seat. She might lose the speakership for a few years, but you know she'll get it back when she's like 117 years old. So she can say these things because she knows there will be no consequences. Let them eat cake, as Marie Antoinette said. Nancy Antoinette says, let me go to the salon. If you live in San Francisco right now, all the indoor dining is closed, the hotels are closed, the salons are closed, and yet here's Speaker Nancy Pelosi wearing a fancy velvet robe, and she's parading herself around like a princess. And you think about all the businesses that have been wiped out by the lockdown. I read more than half of all new businesses fail in the first five years, and that's before the pandemic. You add a pandemic to that, you add a lockdown to that, you add the boot of government on a business person's neck, and what you have is a recipe for disaster. Business people are being suffocated right now, and many of them say they'll never be able to reopen. You know, the unemployment rate has skyrocketed. Most of the closures, the executive orders are coming from elected officials. But here's the problem with that. When restaurants and hotels and salons are closed, your congressman still gets paid. Your governor still gets paid. Your mayor still gets paid. Direct deposit. All the people doing the lockdowns are not making a personal sacrifice at all. They've waged a war on COVID, and that's good. We all hate COVID. We hate when people are sick, and we love when people are healthy. But the politicians are sending other people to fight their war on COVID. They're sending you and me. They're sending the gym owner down the street, the tavern owner down the street. The working class is taking the big hit, 
and the smirking class is doing just fine. Politicians, many of whom have only one job skill, convincing people to vote for them, are doing just fine. But this isn't about the pandemic. We're not making policy points about the pandemic or lockdowns or masks or anything of that sort. This is about stopping hypocrisy. This is about asking politicians simply to live by the very same rules they impose on the rest of us or to not impose those rules at all. Just be consistent. I wish it were just Nancy Pelosi, but it's not. This is happening everywhere. The mayor of Philadelphia, Jim Kenney, won't let people eat at restaurants. But then they caught him sneaking over the border into Maryland to eat at a restaurant. Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, who will soon be gone due to term limits, he blocks his citizens from going to the gym, but then he went to the gym during the pandemic. He went to the gym during the pandemic. The governor of New Mexico, Michelle Lujan Grisham, she closed all the jewelry stores, closed all the so-called non-essential businesses, and then they caught her buying jewelry for herself during the pandemic. That's like monarch behavior. The mayor of Chicago, who we have praised on this program, you know, we're a fair program, and the mayor of Chicago is for term limits, and we will always praise that. But she closed all the barbershops and salons, and then she shows up suddenly getting a private haircut from a private stylist. Yeah, right. And we've been seeing these stories for years. I remember once a credible source told me that In the middle of a hurricane down here in Florida, a congressman from Broward County, Florida, Alcee Hastings, he commandeered an army tank so he could get to his mansion and protect his stuff. And these are just the ones we caught. Imagine how many we didn't catch. I'm sure there are countless more examples of politicians who got away with it. I almost want to establish a term limits tip line where if you see a holier-than-thou politician who thinks they're above the law, call us right away, and we'll talk about it on this podcast. We will also pass term limits on that politician.